Yep. Okay, cool, cool. Yep. We say good to go. All good to go. Uh, Ninja, do you want to run a disclaimer for us? Yes, yes, yes. What's good, people? It's your boy Fadlan, aka Ninja, co founder of Blockchain Sensei. Um, I'm currently at a secret location somewhere in a coffee shop. Um, it is currently eight minutes past eight PM UK time, Monday the fifteenth of May two thousand twenty-three. Another exciting episode of the game every single Monday, eight PM to half nine UK time, aka three PM to half four PM EST US time. Every Monday, free weekly stocks, crypto, AI, investing, trading, you name it, webinar, all replays at youtube.com slash blockchain sensei. Without further ado, there is a disclaimer that we must disclose. Terms and conditions, all content is for education, information, and entertainment purposes only. I should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy, sell, hold any assets or place any trades. Uh, you probably should never take financial advice from anybody in a Solana hut in the middle of a coffee shop um, over Zoom. Please do your own research. Our content is intended and should only be used for informational use only. It is very important to do your own analysis before making any investments, which should be based on your own individual circumstances. Please always pay your bills and debts before making any investments whatsoever. You should always take independent professional advice from a professional advisor. Do we have any professional advisors here? No. No. We never... It, it's funny how we never seem to, to, to have any uh, professional advisors or independently research and verify all and any information you may find in our show. You wish to rely upon whether you wish to make an investment decision or otherwise. All investments come with what, ladies and gentlemen? Risk. Risks. Bad Therefore, risks. please do your own research. Again, um, I'm not a financial advisor, and now there's no one here on the call. And we do not intend to be perceived or received as financial advisors. However, we are, we are working in collaboration with several accredited financial advisors. If you're unable to mitigate your risk, then please contact us immediately so we can refer you to an accredited financial advisor. Now, um, in this episode of the game, we will be covering live technical analysis and market updates. Mr. Harding, are you dying to go first? Or no, are you no, happy for me to No, all you, bro. All right, fantastic. Okay, so let's go to Instagram.com slash blockchain sensei. And as promised on Instagram, big ups to Alex Codling. Big ups to Alex Codling. Oh, Alex, am I allowed to tell them your other alias or is that a secret? I don't wanna I don't wanna spill the beans about think, about his other personality. You just, you just got audio, you might have to say that again. You just you just rejoined. Oh, it's fine. Anyway, anyway, it's cool. So, one of my personal bear market, high risk, high reward. I'll say it again: high risk, high reward is PayPal stock. The reason why is because a lot of great entrepreneurs, including but not limited to Elon Musk are part of what they call the PayPal Mafia. Now, PayPal right now is in the absolute dirt. This is not financial advice to invest in PayPal. But if there was a hypothetical time to, to invest in PayPal, because what do they say? You don't want to invest in great assets at the wrong time, right? You want Bitcoin, but you don't want, you don't want Bitcoin at 68,000. Why is this not working? It's like the Matrix is attacking my... Um, my trading view. What's going on? <laughs> All right, cool. We found we found ways around it. So again, it's not financial advice to invest in um in PayPal, obviously. Uh, it's not financial advice to invest in PayPal. However, if there was a good time to invest in PayPal, and if PayPal was a hypothetically bounce up. Today's prices, or slightly below, could be a good time. Now, I posted here. So if you type in Google, does it, in fact, let's do it right now. Let me press Control-Shift-M for incognito, um, for a non-biased uh, history historical um, search result, and type, and type, does 
Elon Musk. No, no. Is Elon Musk on the board of PayPal? Is Elon Musk on the board of PayPal? This is this is just um, ninjas hot takes. Um, so the post that we did on blockchain was these these are some of the following results. With the company suffering from compounding technological issues and a lack of cohesive business model, the board ousted Musk and replaced him with Thiel in September 2000. Big up to Peter Thiel. He is he is the uh, author of a book called Zero to One, which I highly recommend. Um, under Thiel, the company focused on the money transfer service and, and was renamed PayPal in 2001. Apparently, Elon Musk um, no longer holds a stake in PayPal. He exited his position after the sale of the company and used his proceeds from the sale of the fund to invest in SpaceX and Tesla. I don't doubt that he did sell some of his PayPal stake, but I don't believe that he doesn't own any, any yeah. stake. Come on. Yeah, me neither. 20, 20 years ago, Elon Musk was fired from PayPal. Was he fired or was he put in the shadows? Hmm. Anyway, I commented. What did I comment? It's not showing the comment. I don't think this is true. I think there is more to it. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's my hot take right now on um, on uh, tech stock picks. So how do I look at the market? The first thing I look at, and I've said this on technically speaking, but I've never oh. I've never said this on the game. Is the first thing I look at is something called the SIXRE. Now, unfortunately, I do not yet know a technical indicator that tracks the exact size of the real estate market or real estate valuation. But this is the closest thing. And um, briefly, what the SIXRE is, it's, um, it's, um, it measures holdings. It measures real estate holdings in the SPX, so top 500 um, uh, US companies. Um, and the SPX and the VT, which is the total stock market, are very, very similar. So I'm assuming SIXRE is similar to global real estate. Um, again, nothing's financial advice. So what I can see here is that the gap between the 10 and the 20 moving average is increasing, which is very signal. Um, and then I can also see on the weekly, oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. If I get the uh, horizontal line, I can, s no, not the horizontal. I don't want the horizontal. I want the um, trend line. Yeah, trend line. I can see that the RSI is bearish. And where, where SIXRE does a drawdown, VT does a drawdown. I'll just show you if I compare it, compare it to VT, which is the stock market. Okay, so as we can see, uh, the stock market peaked in November 2021, which is very common knowledge. So did the crypto market. SIXRE peaked in December 2000, 2021. Um, COVID crash was March 2020. Um, and uh, the stock market um, bottomed out in March 2020, but the SIXRE bottomed out in April. Um, was that April? No, it didn't. Yeah, there was. It, it was still more of a drawdown in April. So we can see this. There's a bit of a lag. There's a bit of a lag in um, in in actions, but usually within within 60 days. So still still very much trend following. Um, I see SIXRE going down. That's my current market sentiment. Uh, which trickles down to VT going down. Obviously, they just take over, take over to compare. You don't want to compare it to itself. That's weird. Uh, and then just to back what I said previously about about um, VT uh, and SPX, which VT being the stock market, SPX being um, the top five hundred um, uh, US companies. They they move in pretty relative unison. Uh, let me take that off to make it less confusing. Right now, what's the 1020 uh, saying? So we can see that they are closing together. My sentiment right now is that the red's going to cross and then the blue is going to go down and then it's going to be it's going to be bearish. Um, so I'm bearish when it comes to the stock market, uh, especially because we've been 
at these levels down here. I don't think we're going back to these trenches, but I think we could go down to, um, let's call it 89 levels. Uh, if I use it in, if there's, a, there's a really good indicator that uh, I got shown recently. Um, oh, what is it with the with the um, empty blocks, Mister Hardin? Do you remember? I can't. I can't remember the indicator. Uh, I think people are gonna have to pay for that lesson. Same. Same okay. with. What, same with what you just told them about. So uh, the the little ten twenty people are gonna have to pay for that. So that's that's <laughs> okay. premium game. Right. No more ten twenties. No more ten twenties. Let's take that one off. Let's take that one off. Um, next thing to look at is the Dow Jones. So I started doing this thing where I draw the uh, the ten twenty moving average, and I, and, I, and I predict the future. Will Ninja's crystal ball work? Who knows? We'll see. Um, there's no science to this besides besides instincts. Uh, DXY. Let's have a look at the strength of the dollar on the daily time frame. We can see a. Okay. In, fa in fact, you can put the ten twenty back on, but we just won't explain how it works. All right, we won't, we won't explain. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um. If okay. You know. So, right now, my sentiment is that we're going to pretty much move sideways because we pretty much heard the news of bricks, etc. Et I don't. I don't see the dollar doing doing a dump. That's what I don't see the dollar doing. I see the dollar moving sideways. Um. That's my current market sentiment. Apple. Did you know, guys, that if you purchase Apple on the start of the year, in, in a, literally the start of the year, 10th of January, you would be 38% up? That would be nice, wouldn't it, in a bear market? If you know, you know. I um, think it's impossible okay, to get 50% so, return a year. Yeah. And if anybody sniped the, uh, the Netflix dip, which was very recent, 15th of March, only two months ago, you could have cashed out 23% uh, within the space of a few weeks. Yo, please Remember, tell me you're not an asset doing that, please. Please, please tell me. I, I know I, I love my property people, but like, it's just, I just don't really see any other asset class allowing you to do that with relative fundamental information available look and the lick. rsi was in the dirt like rsi was in the dirt yeah now now, now that you're on rsi let the bem spray his piece about the rsi <laughs> yeah Bob. i've been waiting patiently <laughs> Go on, this RSI. Here's, here's, here's your rsi moment <laughs> oh this rsi is getting i've said it so many times that but let me let me put the video and the last time the last time the rsi was that low was this time over here, April 2022. So gonna... sometimes you gotta wait, guys. You gotta wait, you know. This RSI sometimes is... you gotta wait. This RSI has got me gassed. Like. I know, and I've been talking about us, but I know I, if, I, if, we, if you guys want a session, I know I talked about it last Friday, but seriously, like, it's, it's just mad how we <laughs> look. Look, Skepta, Skepta has a bar and it says, She was never your girl, it was just your turn. It was not, never your asset, it's just your turn. Buy and yeah. sell. Yeah. It's just, it's it was never your that. asset. It's just your turn. It's just it's your turn that. to buy it. Your turn to sell it. Because, because the thing is, yeah, I looked at it. I've tested this RSI like on so many assets. Like so, last Friday, I saw Tesla. I saw the RSI for Tesla at eighty, and I got in a short. And lo and behold, the thing just went. It just dropped, and then <laughs> even on, like, it just dropped. I was like, okay, I knew this was going down. And I saw the gains. I was like, wow. Then like. Another thing, not only did it help me get in, but it also helped me take profits because all the time, I was, I, was, I was in a trade on Saturday, like, I was trading crypto and then I saw the RSI, like, I saw the price, I was in profits, like, I saw the I saw the price pump too much. I was like, nah, nah, this ain't right. Then as soon as I saw the RSI hit 80, I cashed out. Two minutes later, the price just went crashing down. <laughs> and <laughs> other guys, FOMO, and I'm another, and when, when, because they saw the pump, like the, they saw the pump, and then the RSI was at seventy five, and people were like they're gonna farm in. I was like, "Why are you farming? Like the, this thing is way overboard. This is gonna come crashing down." Like, and and other things as well. Like when I saw the RSI, like bing bong, like sort of like choppy. The, the easiest thing for me to do was this thing. There's two outcomes. 
either this RSI could it could go overbought or the RSI could get oversold. So I just waited. I said, there's no point in me trying to overtrade no, and wait. No, guys, guys, just overtrade. guys. Just wait. Just sometimes gotta be patient, just gotta wait it out. Look, guys, 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 look, look, look. Even on oil, right? Go from here to here, that's 24%. Yeah. Here here to here, 18%. Here to here, 26. And then oh, those yeah, three moves sorry. compounded. That's basically that's basically two X on oil. There's always opportunities in a bear market. There is. As long as the market's okay. moving, there's opportunities. When does exactly. the market not move? Exactly that. It's always moving. Exactly. All yeah. right. So crypto market sentiment. Um, crypto market sentiment. I think the gap between the red and the blue, because I'm not allowed to explain it, is going to increase. And yeah, I've got I've got a bearish sentiment for the market. Uh, at, least, at least for the upcoming uh, May, I'm bearish. I'm bearish for May. That's my current sentiment. But I'm not a financial advisor. It's yeah. just my opinion. Mr. Hardy may completely yeah. disagree. Um, okay, so for the market, excluding Bitcoin, again, I'm bearish. Uh, market, altcoin market, bearish. Um, I'll literally share with you a trade right now um, that, that, that I've done with a Phantom. I yeah. have... I won't give you the exact... I won't give you the exact uh, uh, buy, buy order, but let's just say... I sold around 37 and I'm looking to buy back at somewhere in this region. And that drawdown can increase my phantom position by 15, 20% in this zone. Swing trade. The swing when you got a few yeah. thousand, it's a lot. It's swing, swing trade. Um, it, it's not even swing trading, it's selling and buying back. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. guess you could call that swing trading, but um, yeah, those are my uh, those are my market sentiments for now. Um, Miss Harding, you want to challenge me anything or take over? Yeah, I'll take over. My turn, my turn, my turn. All right, thank okay. you very much, guys. I'm gonna get off to, to an event. No worries. See you in a bit, Broski. Take care. Thank you, bro. So, not everybody will fully understand all of my TA. I'm gonna break it down Just as best as I can. Because this guy, when he tears, it looks like a colourful rainbow. Just to be, re- just to be ready, guys. <laughs> it looks like a Mazda. Looks like it looks like a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a unicorn, but it, it tends to be. Well, I'm not allowed to say it's accurate, am I? Legally. Un- unicorn, unicorn hunting with with a unicorn strategy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. We only looking for them big bag twenty baggers. <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah, Michael, Michael's definitely a long-term trader, uh, to say the least. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he he the way he trades is he trades the macro moves rather than the micro moves. Yeah, I'm not um, on these little two to one, five to one, little two hundred percent profit moves. Like that's not what I'm looking for. If it's not twenty x, I'm not interested. That's what I'm looking for. But that's on stocks as well. I'm looking for 20x moves on stocks as well, by the way, guys. And they do exist. I was about to call you a true degen, but you just had to throw in the stocks and threw me off. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to tear this up now. You ready? Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. You ready? Okay, cool. So this is something I normally do in lessons with people. And I'm going to do a little bit of crypto, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give people some mad, mad, macro um charts that they want to be want to be looking at now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to teach you when i have all these which one do we think institutions are looking at the one minute time frame the four hour the daily the weekly the monthly or the free month say three months they're looking at the free month they probably got extended further time than just the free month (laughs) <laughs> yeah so first we're going to look at the three month time frame because i know there ain't nobody no traders out there going you should look at the three month time frame now this is how you'll find monster baggers monster baggers what well, gains more gains gains that are just disgusting so let's i'm not i'm not even going to move from the chart that was on was on 
corporate high yield bonds. Yeah. Look at this. This is the three month chart. Look at this resistance that was just there, clear as day. Yeah. Everybody see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's been there since what? July 2019. Yeah. How many touches does it have? One, two, three. So was it pretty obvious it was going down? Yeah. yeah. Because it, so, it, it confirmed, yeah, but didn't break through. So then let's just count it from here. Let's say we, we, we entered here. Corporate bond sure. went down 16%, yeah? 19%. So then if you wanted the monster bagger, yeah, and you're going to do a short, you would have entered here when you had your confirmation and your stop would have been just above, just here. There we go, like that. And then your reward, you would have just let it rip until it turned around. Which is around there, yeah. Look at that ratio. 13 to 1 ratio, that is. Yeah? But if you got it earlier, watch what the difference is. Watch what the difference is. You got to understand, the monsters are out there. If we got it, literally at the support line, I was like, yo, I'm getting in this thing from... Oh, hang on a minute. Yo, it's really not trying to let me show you. It's like my keyboard's in burst. But I'll show you on a different one. But anyway, I need to go through, go, go through these charts. You get, you get the gist of what I'm saying. So here is an index that a lot of people ain't looking at. And what do they say a recession is? They say a recession is when you're in a downtrend for more than three months. No, for, for six months, is it? Three months? I can't remember. Because they keep changing it, what it is. But nonetheless, each one of these candles is three months. How long has this been in a downtrend? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two nine. Years. Almost nine times three, that's what? Uh, 27. 27 months downtrend. Mad. Is yeah. that a recession? Yes. Clearly. 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 Now, this is the Chinese market's that for the last oh, yeah. 27 months have been oh, man. on trend. COVID absolutely clotted them. Yeah. Clotted the, the whole economy was mash. So, and then the property thing that happened out there as well mashed the economy. So then when we look at it on the weekly, look how clean this was. Bam, 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 bam. And now it's just hit this semi support line here. So I'm expecting it to come up here again and get clotted one more time. Now, the next one is QRAFT. Um, QRAFT, why do I look at it? It's the largest AI traded index in the world. Um, it's been, I've been talking about this index for about two years. Um, uh, and you'll see that it mirrors the SP basically exactly, uh, even though it's AI that trades it. So make of that what you want, um, and make of that what you want that it's existed for many, many years and it's not new. Uh, so here's that and then I'll just layer the S&P over the top so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, can't quite see that. There we go. Can we see it? It looks the same. Make of that what you want, people. <laughs> Make of that what you want. <laughs> uh, it looks so, the same. It must be the same traders. Yeah. So next one we're going to go to is ARK, ARK, which I think people should be accumulating. Well, not I think. I don't think anyone should be doing anything. I'm going to be accumulating like crazy. I have been accumulating... Because when you can get ARC, which is based on innovation, which is based on technology, which is based on, you have to understand what, like just really deep the concept, right? Investing is about 
future profits. It's about putting your money into something that is going to have profits in the future. If innovation doesn't have profits in the future, then what is it? If the world doesn't have innovation, what is it? It's dead. Dead, yeah. So for me, the human race has never stopped innovating. And I don't think it will. And especially now that we've got AI, I don't think it will. So I personally think my... the bargain of the century, in my personal opinion, and what I think has been happening, I think Ark got absolutely destroyed because this looks like one big accumulation zone to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at a 300% gain if it returns back to where it was uh, two years ago. Um, and if this is a long-term play, in my opinion, yeah. Yep. You, investing in innovation isn't a terrible idea, in my opinion. Now, um, this is getting clotted underneath the 200 moving average. However... There's a little, little, little bit of interesting action happening here. So you've got to watch carefully. Of course, of course. So just, 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 just watch carefully on that one. So I'm not going to touch too much on Bitcoin. Uh, we're just going to look at the market cap more than Bitcoin. Um, so on this, I'm seeing this, this level here, this level right here. If we go below this level right here. Uh, below 500 uh, billion market cap expect a bit of a bloodbath expect it but I, do, I don't I don't know I don't know Any, anything can happen with that one anything can happen considering market sentiment I think if it goes anywhere near that then it will automatically just shoot down yeah so that's this level right here 26,000 630 mark that level if you're gonna short if it goes below there trust me daddy that's coming to at least 25 mm. and if we go below 25 trust me we're coming to at least 22 so but that's if we go down now based on this rsi the bem's best friend we're at like 36 and there's a bit of a support line so Again, slyly, this could be a macro accumulation zone. Mm. Don't know if you quite see it here like this. Yeah. Let's go three month candles. See what we see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is actually hilarious. So. Do you reckon it could be like potentially uh, that could be an accumulation that we could push up based on the RSI? Well, now that we look at it like this, this was the accumulation zone mm. from the 1st of July 2022 mm. to now. And then the first exit has been here. Mm. So it would probably be another exit and then another accumulation but let's see uh then we've got the global markets we don't want that one uh crypto index we don't want that one I'm not gonna go over that now copper mr copper tends to be an indicator of what's going to happen in the markets overall because most technology needs copper most of the world needs copper in some shape way or form so, if there's a shortage on copper, yeah, it's normally pretty bad. But anyway, that's that one. Um, so, the one that I've been looking at the most that has been entertaining me for absolutely ages is this support line that nobody is talking about. Nobody. That, my friends, is the DXY, the dollar index. That, my friends is the dollar in comparison to a basket of other currencies. Now, we might want to shit on the dollar and say that it's rubbish, but that support line is pretty brazy. 
that means even if the dollar is doing shit, it means other currencies are doing even shit. Mm-hmm. So this is an area I don't think many people are like admitting or looking at. And then if you look, there's a cheeky little crossover. So that means that the dollar isn't done going up. Now, the last time the dollar went up, it caused the bloodbath in the markets. The moment it got to 103. Mm. We're not that far off 103. Mm. Now, with that and the interest rates with the banks combined, that's a bit nasty. It's a bit nasty. <laughs> so, potentially, if we go over this 103 level, I'm shorting it hella on the markets. Um, sure. yeah. But, where is the flight to safety? Is it Bitcoin? Who knows? Now, again, crazy support level just here on ETH. ETH, yeah. I'm going to change this one to red. Uh, da, 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 da. And at this, around the 177, 175 level. Uh, again, I'd expect that if it doesn't hold up. I'm not expecting it to hold up. If, In all honesty... I'm expecting this to get clouded tomorrow. Tomorrow, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's what I'm expecting. It might not do. I might have got my TA completely wrong on that one. Oh my um, god. But, but we'll see. Oh my god. Um, and where, <gasps> where would I expect it to go down to? Uh, about one thousand five hundred to start. But we can see if you look at the levels that I've I've marked off, potentially even down to eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. We've got one lower than that now. Uh. Now, is there any fundamental reason why Ethereum might go down like that? What, uh, what's a grand, a grand dip? Yep. Oh f- f- wow! Mm-hmm. Really? Wow. Well, what would be the reason? Well. <laughs> If you've been tuning into some other episodes, things have been getting a bit mythical. And if you realize how important mythical games is to Ethereum mm. and its transactions. Oh, yeah. And now it's not there. It's moved to Polkadot. That is one of the biggest gangster moves in the history of gangsters. My guy, mm. Gavin just came up and went, yo, bro, I'm taking your biggest line. Taking your biggest distro. They're on my thing now. Mm-hmm. No, no, no one's really talking about it. But that's a big L for ETH. A big, big L for ETH. Um, and let me just uh, go to the, my Twitter and show you a uh, a little other thing that happened with ETH that, again, no one's talking about. Ain't no one talking about these things, man. And this will be the definition of dropping the bag, fam. Uh, fuck. No, nah, it could completely go the other way around, isn't it? Like, it could, it could just be scare tactics, and then next thing you know, ETH's at 10K. So you just got to kind of hedge your bets. Hmm. So you gotta do. You gotta play. You gotta really play the real big boy game. Okay, so let me go on my uh my ping. I think I retweeted it. Oh no, it's, it's on the Instagram. Blockchain sensei Instagram with me. Share it. Yeah, uh, let me know when you can see my screen again. Uh, Instagram. Slight fundamental reason, and that is this. Uh, um, so, Litecoin's transactions hit a record high. Uniswap's trading volume outpaces Coinbase for the fourth consecutive month. Yeah, but at the same time, all of that's happened. Obviously, the deep in market's gone up. Um, but ETH has suffered its second glitch in less than 24 hours. Mm. 
So if that isn't a sign that someone is running absolute back shots to Eve's whole spine, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on. <laughs> Something is going on. And Eve is Eve's getting a little bit handled in the background and we don't even realise. If you're looking at the signs, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be seeing it. Um, so, next one, UK government bonds. They are actually surprisingly in an uptrend, but there is a big, 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 big resistance here. Now, mm. if UK government, if people start going, I'm not trying to mess with these UK government bonds, and they start putting, because remember, this is Wales that are buying these big, 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 different levels of Wales mm -hmm. are buying this. Pension funds are buying these, yeah? Now, I don't know if you heard about a company called Apple, yeah? They're a pretty safe company, but their yield mm -hmm. is competing. Does anyone remember what the, the yield was on the Apple account? Can someone pull it up? No, I don't remember. I think it was four. Was it three point five or was it four percent? Four point one five percent. Four point one five percent. Or you can put your money in a ten-year government bond and wait for ten years to get your money back and get three point eight on a good day. Sounds that sounds like a great deal. <laughs> you you decide. You decide where you're putting your money. If you're a whale. I forgot how mad gold is. Gold is absolutely mad. Now, gold is acting like a mad hedge um, move to safety. Now, again, yeah. gold in against the pound and against the dollar isn't that great. In other currencies, it's absolutely fantastic. When we go to the three-month candles, boy, gold has been doing an absolute mazzling. Oh, give me give me some room to, to, to share my screen, Mike. I was going to do a little piece of gold. No, 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 no. It's cool, it's cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do your thing. Don't worry. You can see here, uh, gold is gold is doing is a nice little thing. Let me, let me just... Uh, that's Europe. Russell. Uh, India. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So, this is the S&P 500 without the stupid weighting that Apple and Microsoft have in it because Apple and Microsoft make up about 10% of the S&P. When really, if everything was equal weighted over the, over the last three months, this is the way that it actually looks versus let's just layer the S&P over the top of it. This, and let's go to daily. So can you see how overvalued the S&P is in comparison? Yeah. Yeah. It was in line, and then it just went a bit crazy. But that's recently. We'll go to, should be able to see it a bit more better. Here. You can see it tore away during lockdown, and now it's come back a little. But now it's tore away again. So inevitably... It'll come back. Um, so that's that. TNX, uh, the interest rate. We've already talked about that. Uh, Ninja's already done the totals. US uh, 10 year versus US 2 year. Now, again, a lot of people aren't really understanding and deep in how much of a fucked up macro situation this is, guys. Really, really, I want you to understand this. Again, Apple's interest is 4.15, right? US government bonds, 10 years you're locking up your money for, you're getting maximum 4%. At the high, it was 4.2% locking up your money for 10 years, right? Versus two-year, we're at a high, you was getting five percent. So you tell me where are you putting your money. 
in the 10-year bond or in the two-year bond. Now, that is what's called an inverted yield curve. And when you get an inverted yield curve, when the short-term bonds are, uh, are more lucrative than the 10-year the bonds, it fucks up the whole market and it causes a recession. And it causes a recession because it causes bad destabilization because the whales are like, why the hell am I leaving my money in a 10-year bond in, Amer in the American for the American government when they're giving me at, or at points double for it being there for two years? But when it's in there for two years, guess what happens? It's only in there for two years. So then all of that becomes liquid. You get in the play. So, two years from February 2023, the 27th of February, in two years' time, 27th of February 2025 is going to be a maza. An absolute there is going to be more money floating about then than there's probably ever been in a very long time because there is no way pension funds and funds and a lot of whales didn't take advantage of this. Normally they don't, as we can see. It's not been that great. But at those levels, so yeah, are we going to get a bull market in the next two years time well you tell me so then we'll go to the vix now uh, very lucky you're getting to see my fully annotated vix which literally tells you what to do and when so we can see we're at the all-time high levels on the vix so if we come down i'm expecting the vix to come up to about here about 19 and then then when it does that i'm expecting it to carry on going up so go, going down i mean and what the vix does when the vix goes down the markets go up so i'm going to share my last few with you now now this is mad game this is crazy 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 macro game this is the velocity of money so what is the velocity of money Velocity of money is probably one of the most important things in the world. I remember uh, telling uh, our good friend Alex from the uh, Simplicity Tokenomics about this. And he's become obsessed with it recently. Um, what is velocity of money? It's how many times money moves around a, a, a community or around an economy. So if, let's say, for example, if I, if someone brings... If someone from China spends ten billion on a building, some of that ten billion is going to go to the planners. Some of that ten billion is going to go to then the um, the construction workers that are building in the UK. Those same construction workers are going to go to Southbridges and buy some clothes. Those staff at Southbridges are then going to go to uh, McDonald's and buy some food. So you can see that's four times the money's moved around the economy. Right now, the velocity of money in the US is at around 1.37. The money's not moving. Now that is because if we look at what happened with the RSI and the velocity of money, yeah, this thing was tweaking. It was at 94. So is it due to come down? Yes. Has it come down to a level where it's basically got to shoot back up at some point? Yes, because this RSI is at seven. Not below three, seven, guys. At one point, it was at three. The American dollar was dead in its own country. Yeah? So this is the M2. And again, it could get rejected by this MA. If it gets rejected by this MA and comes down again, boy, that is when, when we hit this level, the money printer will go brr. Because it will mean that nobody is moving money and no one's spending 
So they'll just have to give people more money and then they'll spend. So let's see what happens there. Um, and then this, the final macro play I'll give you, the United States Purchasing Managers Index. Um, this kind of gives you an idea of inventory levels. So this gives you an idea of are companies buying stock? What's their behavior like? Not are they buying stock, stock? I mean, like, are they buying inventory? Are Nike buying more cotton? Is uh, Krispy Kreme buying more sugar? So we can see this is at a low that it's not been at since 2020, which was understandable. And since, 20, since 2016 and since 2008. So if we're not in a recession, I don't know what's happening. They're trying to slow down spending. Spending has slowed down. Spending has died. Like, dead, dead. Now, final, final, final one is this baby. If you've got big money, there's a thing called Q-Yield. I'm just going to tell you, go do your own research on what the dividend payout is on Q-Yield and how often that dividend payout is on Q-Yield. And look at the price that it is right now and the price that it was before. There's investing in property to get your yield and then there's investing in Q-Yield to get your yield and get a 47% gain on your yield. But that's if you've got big money. That's big money. Cool. Kish, over to you. But there's nothing to say, bro. What do you, what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> My guy said, over to you. Uh, you said, yeah, it'll be a couple seconds. I think the uh, game's going to do the gold thing. I think the game's going to wrap up, bro. I think the game's going to wrap up, man. Okay, um, we'll wrap up. We'll wrap up. Bro. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, I think I think it's it's good to wrap it up. Um, cause yeah, I think that's that's enough uh, for the people. Um, and um, yeah, I mean we're we're seeing similar things in the space. Uh, there's just a few things that I had marked out that I'm now sort of seeing playing out, which is kind of interesting. Um, I expected a bit of consolidation on um Bitcoin for a little bit longer. And just seeing how it's played out from what I mapped out. And we actually mapped this out on the, on the game as well, which is kind of funny. I'll just share this one time. Um, I don't know if you remember when we mapped this out on Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, look, I forgot about this. <laughs> look. <laughs> it's picking up. And then we we had it playing out, touching hair and then dipping down. Um, and, and obviously the big change, big crash, etc., but um, yeah, it's quite it's quite interesting to see how it played out because I expected some consolidation. It, it did dip down. It didn't uh, pick up and consolidate. It went down and, and sort of climbed mm -hmm. a little. Uh, went down a bit here and then, then spiked up. But it's kind of interesting to see that this is the region where it would sort of start picking up, and you can start kind of see that mm. playing out slightly, which is kind of interesting. Another thing that's quite interesting as well when I was doing the gold. Um, Um, another thing that's quite interesting when I was doing the gold was 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 this. So when you were doing some TA, I was looking at this and I was like, "What?" <laughs> so, so this basically just shows that there's inaccurate data. Um, basically, this is forex.com, and of course, anything to do with forex. Uh, the data is not accurate on the... That's hella not accurate. Bro, bro, and it didn't matter what time... I, just, I changed the time frames thinking it will, it will be different, but it doesn't matter if I go to weekly. It just, <laughs> just looks like this. Nah, I'm not getting scammed. <laughs> bro, so literally there's no actual data. So if you actually go on like another one, uh, like this one, for example, you can actually see... Oh, okay. Here's, yeah. here's the actual data of the buyers and sellers 
But forex.com, I don't know what's going on with them, but yo, I would not touch any trades on that platform. Just to, yeah, that's yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade on that platform at all. Um but yeah, I think um gold gold in general is, is, is quite an interesting one. Um uh where's the one that I tried up earlier? Let me see if I can put it up. Um, um I think it was i think it was this one actually um yeah basically um it's quite interesting to see the different um regions within within gold it's quite interesting because it moves very aggressively as you can see look at these candles um just looking at these candles alone like really aggressive moves um i think gold is such a big mover it's best to do macro plays with it and do sort of long trades where you're getting in here and exiting up upwards around about right here or like you're yeah it's best to just find uh points in the market and and do long long trades on gold in my opinion because um if you're looking at areas like here uh, areas like here just trading in between these areas and these regions um I don't think you can go 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 wrong uh, with that, as you can see, even on the short as well. It's just been going through these these different areas, so that's how I'd play it on 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 gold, because um, it's such a large mover. Like if you're trying to trade on on the um, short term uh, basis, then oh there, here you go on the weekly, here you go. So, uh, I think that the other lines that I added did not help that. Let me see if I can undo a few of those. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, if you go on like uh, weekly, um, you can see that there's just a bunch of a bunch of regions that I've mapped out here, and a bunch a uh, bunch of different uh, spots. And right now it's, it's picking up to touch this region up here at the top. Mm -hmm. um, and from here, I think it's going to struggle to push through. Uh, but considering the events of the world, I would not be surprised if it makes a new high um, and breaks through previous uh, highs um, because of obviously it being a safe haven. Um, and also Bitcoin actually going up isn't, isn't um, you know, it would, would, would happen as well. If, What's if, that yeah. price level of that high? Uh, it's looking around about two two grand. Uh, yeah, around oh, about two oh six five. Yeah, so a hedge play would be to be above two oh six five, and then below two thousand to short. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, in new in new regions, I'd wait. I'd I'd wait for it to break through here and, and then touch down to a region like down here. Yeah, but look at that DMI, bro. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. The I know that. like a crocodile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but with this, this is the volume, and I'm for DMI. You're looking for a crossover. Um, yeah. So for for hair, it looks like it's got uh, to come down. That looks like it's got to come down. Yeah, it has to come down. Yeah, but it, I think it, it has to get. It has to like touch this region. But yeah, it's looking like it needs to come down definitely. But um, looking at it in terms of on a on a lower time frame you can see when the crossovers have been mm. and map them out so you can see that it's crossed over quite a few times and it's it's in the middle of a fight you can you can change time frames to actually look closer and see what type of battle is actually happening but this was a, a region here where um i look for stuff like this where there's a crossover then you can actually see at this point there's a huge event that's about to happen when as this crossover was happening you can then actually get into it and then boom, before you know it, you're part of this um, right here. So looking for crossovers like over here as well. Uh, another crossover was here. You can see, boom, you could have rode that up. Um, so I look for crossovers. So yeah, definitely waiting for a crossover would be good. But I'm looking for, oh, by the way, the DMI does not look like this as well. I made it look like this. It's normally like orange and all sorts of stuff. This is the green is never the plus and all of that it's always going to be messed up it looks uh the colors are always off to throw people off um but i changed the colors to these colors to make it obviously easier but you can see i'm waiting for a crossover for sellers to to actually fully cross over 
and then um then we'll see this start to come down um but that's that's a that's an easy way of, of indicating and, and sort of trading on that um but yeah i think i think um in terms of the markets um yeah i think definitely bitcoin gold um will be a safe haven i expect oil to go up quite dramatically as well um yeah i've been saying yeah well this is also not looking great on the vpvr it's not it's not pulling good data it's gappy anyway look at that um but yeah on oil as well i, I would also say that um that that's due to 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 go up quite a bit considering that there is a huge shortage in oil um and then it's an extra excuse to increase everybody's bill prices again yeah 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 and also i'm looking at down i'm also looking at the government and what they're doing they're also pushing that sort of saving on your energy bills type vibe as well uh, which has been quite quite interesting but um go back to that a sec from from the the highs of oil when they started putting everyone's bills up to the to the most recent low i mean let's just see how much of pagans they've actually been uh give me a date uh go from the february high um february no not yeah. this year last year last year when the when this whole ukraine thing started mm. yeah yeah there, 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 there. Oh, that February to boy March as soon as March. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go from go from there to where we are now. As a short. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that would be rotted. Boom. So you're telling me oil is literally half the price it was. Yep. But everyone's bills are still double. Yeah. Um. No, but th- there's a shortage in trade. So what actually has happened is, um, so let me see if I can put this on Nord, uh, Nord Stream. So if you look at this right here, so this is the Nord Stream pipeline. It's getting a bit technical, <laughs> but basically uh there was a line that went down from russia all the way down to europe there's uh germany france and all of them, them not you can see what countries are like poland germany uh sweden norway's right here you can see this is this is where it was straight from russia all the way down and it's providing um basically oil and natural gases uh to these regions and obviously um I mean, you can see what's happening in terms of plays with, um, like, um, what's it called, uh, UAE. Uh, you can see who they're shaking hands with and what's actually going on there as well. Um, and this is because of things like this. But what happened with this actual line, it actually got blown up uh, by four bombs. Um, so, yeah, here. So four bombs actually got let off and actually destroyed this pipeline so there was oil and gas leaking out into the into the ocean um and That's they obviously cool. it basically forced russia to actually cut off the off that pipeline um also in terms of natural gases as well russia are doing some some stuff near antarctica as well um with like the largest natural gas uh plant in the world as well so that's another thing to to keep in mind but basically, um, they're saying they don't know who did this attack. They don't know who let off these uh, bombs. Where's the picture? They don't know who let off these bombs. Uh, but it was done by a, a special type of drone, which only a handful of countries have access to. And only a handful of countries can actually pull this off without um, it being uh, spotted, etc. cetera. Um, but basically, My opinion is it's a country that's got stars in its flag. Yeah, basically, yeah, I can't exactly say it directly, but the person who runs that whole country basically said it indirectly anyway, so it's not really, a, a, it's a pretty much a no-brainer if you guys know the political standpoint of the world right now, mm-hmm. um, but considering that this has happened now, there's a huge, huge shortage into these regions, um, and this country, country Germany, they had about 
I think three years reserve while this was happening. So their reserves are now cut short. Energy crisis. Everyone has to like watch exactly how much they're actually using. Uh, their they have to basically regulate their their usage, etc. Um, so things like this are going to be coming into play. Um, in the macro results of obviously the US US dollar potentially crashing, whether it crashes or not, or conversion or whatever it may be. Um, so all all of all of these things are coming into into play, and I think that this is gonna make a huge surge in in oil and gas uh, prices um, as as a whole because um, this pipeline got blown up. It takes about I think two years to rebuild, uh, something like that, and um, I think this is gonna cause a huge spike in in, in prices and um, trade as well. So I, I see the oil prices definitely going up because of the shortage and also um yeah just considering that considering that there's there's um yeah there's this situation happening and, and majority of countries don't want to use their own oil as well um which is quite interesting uh, when you look at it because um some countries don't want to use their oil because they see it as their own personal uh commodity and reserve and they want to take from other countries and um, that's what we're seeing happening in the space. Standard. So, so um, yeah, just... for example, the US have enough oil reserve for, I believe, 70 years or something like that. Um, like the US has a ton of oil, but they don't use it and they don't want to extract it. Why and they're not you? putting money into extracting it at all. Why would you? Exactly that. Yeah. So, so the, these are some things that you can sort of see um happening on the macro scale with with the countries um and this sort of shows um why the political standpoint is what it's like because you know there's act of war happening why people are saying well war well, free might happen etc because there's actually acts of war actually happening right now um which is is very interesting um but yeah, I think I think overall it's good for the uh, web free sort of uh, crypto space as a whole because uh, as there's more and more tragedy, unfortunately, um, it does it does open up room for innovation to actually step in and and fix these broken systems. Um, so we will see. Um, I'm not shilling. I'm not shilling this exchange. I'm not shilling this exchange. Yeah, but there's. One of the best adverts I've ever seen from the Web3 space so far is from OKX Exchange. They they went in on the government. They were like, their advert literally is like, the government's telling you lies. If you want to find the truth, <laughs> come with OKX. I was just like, yo, the advert's like UK, UK targeted for, I think, uh, Gen Z. Um, but definitely, I would say... Um, I would say definitely check that out if you if you can. Um, OKX Exchange, the UK advert is absolutely yeah, it's absolutely crazy. But it's just literally like the world's going to crap. Look at it now, and you need to do that. You need to you need to diversify basically, um, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, guys, um, this has been the game. Anything else you want to add, Mike, before we wrap up? Um. Yeah, I'm about to post it out actually. Uh let me just let me just give me a second. Give me a okay. second. One second. One minute. One minute. I'm doing the post. Anagram. Uh, I think your second's over, bro. What's, what's going on? Why is it not letting me? Oh, here we go. Select from computer. Uh, there, Russell. No, no worries at all. You can catch oh. our replay on YouTube. Um, I've not even downloaded the image. That's crazy. Okay. I've not even downloaded the image. Wait, wait, wait. Download MP4. Uh, page 40. Bear with me a sec, guys. It's a, big really it's a big announcement. It's a big oh, yo, you know what? We actually do need to plug something before we leave. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Yeah, yeah, we should do it in the beginning, to be honest. Oh, wait, Keish, you saying, oh, you saying that the bear market 
you guys think the bear market is going to last till like 2025 then nah oh no 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 i never said that i said the market's picking up who said nah. the, who said there's a bear market i know no because i thought like uh because of the uh what do you call it the uh m2 uh money yeah nah i'm saying it's too low i'm saying yeah. it might get clotted and come back down one more time but then they they have to turn the money printer on yeah, yeah, Russell's yeah, I'm with you, Russell. I mean, yeah, the market's picking up. Um there's there's signs. I'm this why I'm talking about hedges, I'm talking about gold and oil. This is why. Because yeah. it's a hedge. Um uh, yeah. Like um, yeah, well what I was saying is look, let me just pull up the, the M two again. Let me show you. Look. Hold up, hold up. So what do you know about the RSI? First of all, let's let's start. Let's just start on just the not RSI. Sharing, yeah? It's not sharing right now. Um, just doing multitasking. I'm trying to do a post at the same time and just be on. <laughs> post. The same time just be on. <laughs> there we go. So okay. From what we know about the RSI, if it's below thirty, it's undervalued, mm-hmm. and it's very likely to change directions. Yeah. 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 The M2 money supply isn't even at 30. <laughs> it got to six. six. And at one point, it was at 1.49. Mm. So based on what it's done in the past, when it was over 70, it was at like 97 yeah. and 90. And it did what at those points? It came down. Mm. So based <laughs> on logic suggesting that if it does the inverse when it's down that much the inverse should happen yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Means it now has to shoot up yeah, yeah because it's just too it's, it's just too low yeah, yeah, yeah like america can't have this bro it's not been like this since beyond 1960 yeah that's a bit mad still Nobody is talking about this. Yeah. Like America actually really deep what, what, what I'm showing you. Yeah. It's a bit mad. Yeah. I think I know, I know, another one to look at is the yen as well and, and actually see what's going on with the one. Mm. Um but yeah, I think yeah, that that's that's the markets, man. Um that's the that's the time that we're in at the moment. Um and it's it's looking at things like the golds, the oils, the bitcoins, and making those plays, as well as getting some absolute steals and some stocks mm. and some um, property oh, plays, whatever game you're in. Um, absolute steals are, are going to be popping out, um, and it's the time to spot them. Yep. Oh, it's not even letting me do the video. I want it to do. Goodness, there's already steals out. <laughs> steals have been out for quite a long time. Yep. Right. Um, Let me do okay. this as a, as, a, as a JPEG. So hold up. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I've got to do it as a GIF. I'm do it otherwise. I'm, I'm a pagan if I don't end the episode with this. So I've got to end the episode with this. Please bear with me, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. It has now downloaded as a GIF. Right now, let me upload it and post it. Come on. Oh, why is this taking forever? I'm so sorry, guys. I should have had this. Oh, yes. Actually, that was my other question. What's the difference between the M1 and M2? Um... How about this? I'm going to give you the same assignment that I would give to absolutely anybody. Yeah, even research. better. Even better. Go on. I'm going to make you co-host so you can share your screen. What am I going to ask you to do, bro? What's in the disclaimer? Yeah, research. Say it again. Yeah, research. Do your own. <laughs> 
I didn't hear of them. I didn't hear of as much as much chest as the beginning of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So go on Chat GPT and go and ask it right now. Oh, mad! For oh. everybody, so everybody can see how you can do your own research. Yeah. It's not hard. People have no excuse. All uh, right, let me share my screen then. You host, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not letting me download this. Uh, hi, yeah. I say hi to my chat GPT. Uh, got all this power at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. That's it, man. Gotta take advantage. Gotta take advantage. There is no excuse for anyone ever seeing anything anywhere and going, I don't understand it. I'm pretty traded. I don't know if this is exactly how you phrase the question, but yes. Oh, she I should have asked it to summarize it. Yeah, I don't think you should have done the, the date, but you'll do it anyway. There you go. Open Super Siri Pro. Greetings, King Kish. How can I be of service? Mad. What's the difference between M1 and M2 uh, US dollar? One moment. Do you M1 is a measure of the total value of money in circulation and includes coins, paper money, travelers' checks, and demand deposits, checking accounts. M2 is a broader measure of money supply and includes M1 as well as savings deposits, certificates of deposit, money market securities, and other liquid assets. There we go. One's liquid assets. One's cash, basically. Mm. Uh, what's the exact name of it? Because like I put M1 M2 on trading view, so uh, the, of the of the chart. Yeah. Uh, so it's called the loss is M1 V and M2 V. Mm. Yeah. Go have some fun because that money <laughs> has yeah. to go, bro. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just because I'm conscious of 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 time. Um, yeah, I'm ready to share my thing, and then I'm I'm done because this. Okay. I was gonna cut out at nine, but uh, do it now. Here we go. So, the announcement is um, together with our homies, Ladyfly, for the first time ever, we are doubling the prize pool of money at this game ball rally. So before it was $150 that you could win um, for getting high scores. This time it is $300 thanks to Nia Blockchain. Uh, big love to, to Nia Blockchain. Uh, please go and like this post and, and tag Nia Blockchain in it. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be doing more competitions like this on Friday where we're literally going to give away money on Friday, live. Um, so make sure you tune in into NFT Fridays. Uh, yeah. Big love for that. So yeah, make sure you are at this event. You can get your tickets um, on Seat Lab, which is on near blockchain. Also, the score game ball. Oh, not the score game ball rally. That's the wrong one. That was the past one. Mm -hmm. At the game ball rally. Um, shout out to anyone that attended the previous ones. You should have got airdropped your NFT. Um, big and it. then because the prize pulls a little bit more we've had to release this special nft now this special mm -hmm. nft is 49 pounds and 85 p but why would you want it because this allows you to enter multiple tournaments so if each tournament you can win 300 uh us dollars you've got this you have the exclusivity forever to enter yeah. multiple tournaments so if you win one tournament, you win $300, boom. You can then enter another one and win another $300. Just to let you guys know, we're giving away over $1,000 worth of prizes at this event. Yeah. So uh, make sure you get your tickets. Uh, the link is about to be in the bio. Well, the link is about to be in the in the chat. 
So go get your tickets. Go tell a friend. Um, and uh, yeah, tag me in blockchain. Thank you very yeah. much, guys. It's been Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, many blessings. It's going to be lots of lots of fun. Uh, lots of amazing projects. Uh, great games, and uh, lots of really good um, insight and also first-hand experience of uh, games that are not fully out yet and things of that nature as well. So it's going to be lots of fun. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks. A big thanks to everyone uh, for tuning into this episode of the game. It's been Keish. We had Ninja early on and um, Michael, like Mike. man like Mad Mike with the unicorn charts. Um, <laughs> it's, been a pleasure. it's been a pleasure. So um, yeah, I'm also gonna I'm also gonna link um, this in the description for everyone on 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 our YouTube as well. Um, if you can make it, it'll be amazing. Um, so yeah, much appreciated, guys, and we'll catch you soon. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye.